everybody, this is Dr. Flight. I hope you're doing great. Um, I want to put together a little video um, that outlines stage two of the project. Um, and uh, by now you have chosen a product category and you've learned a little bit about the industry um, that's associated with that category. Um, and uh, now stage two is an opportunity to um, focus on the company or a firm specifically that can engage in that product category. And so um, your group has likely chosen a, a company by now. And so this is just an overview of what this section of the project will look like for you. So again, this is an independent um, part of the project. There are four different stages. Each stage kind of works independently of each other, although um, they do more or less build on each other in the sense that um, you learned about the industry and now um, as a result of that you should know a number of the different competitors and the, the way the industry is structured anyways. Um, and now you're going to look at a specific company. So this is an internal analysis of the firm um, and um, you want to outline the, the things that the firm does well, its key resources. Um, remember resource based theory of the firm. Um, that's a key underlying uh, motive uh, for how, how you approach this section. Um, and so it's different assets and resources. We also want to take a look at its um, general performance. And, um, and, and ultimately, at the end, we want to identify and describe the, the way the products and services are that, that the company offers. So again, this is a internal um, analysis of your company. Um, and I've put together an outline, which I think will help. Um, that, and we can walk through that a little bit. Again, this is a very short video, so um, I, I would hope that if your group has questions that you reach out and um, ask and get some feedback um, on what you're thinking or what you have in mind. If Again, um, I'm here as a resource to provide um, guidance for, for this. You shouldn't feel like your group is um, on its, uh, you know, out, out, out with, with, on its own without any support. Um, but the outline that I'd suggest is um, the following with, with eight different pieces to it. Um, you can start by offering a brief history of the company. Um, again, this wouldn't be particularly long, maybe half a page or something, something to that effect. Um, then uh, you want to focus on what its purpose and mission is. Um, uh, I would also suggest doing a, um, doing a search just the popular press articles about your company, especially anything that the CEOs or leadership team talks about in terms of what it wants to do or what its goals are, what its you know, objectives are, things like that. Okay, so it's purpose and mission. Again, um, the, the, don't just cut and paste from their website, their mission. Do a little bit of a deeper dive and try to understand why the company uh, exists and what its broader purpose might be. Um, so uh, after that, let's go ahead and jump into its resources and assets. Um, assess, remember the, the VRIN or VRIO framework that would um, distinguish features of the company that differentiate it from other firms in that product category. Um, what are its strengths? What are, what are the, the resources it has that it leverages to form sustainable competitive advantages? This is a very specific type of resource or asset that the company has. The textbook outlines a number of marketing assets um, that you could draw from. So that would be a good, good source there to think about this, this section. Um, continue to dive in from a competitive perspective. Think of the rivals or um, the direct competitors that the firm um, is in competition with. Um, and also distinguish, as you did in the first, in, in the last part, distinguish um, what, what key differentiating features your company has relative to that competition. So every firm has a unique sales proposition, a USP. Um, what is your firm's USP when compared to uh, your competitors? 
it's a good thing to think about. Um, again, uh, the competitive landscape you've probably looked at a little bit already, um, especially in, in stage one, um, but this would be from the perspective of your firm or your company. Now, stage one was not from the perspective of your company. It was an industry level analysis. This is a firm level analysis now. Um, focus next on your the strategic objectives, like specifically, um, like what, what does it want to accomplish? This is a little bit more specific than its mission and its and its and its purpose, right? The organizational mission and purpose is is one thing, but how are they going to achieve that mission and purpose? That's when we start thinking about objectives. Um, also include in this the revenue model. Now a revenue model tracks the cash flows and how the firm actually brings money into the company. Most firms have multiple um, ways that they acquire money, um, whether it's through investments or sales um, of different products and services um, that they offer. So every firm has a revenue model and it describes um, how, they, how they bring in revenue, how they make money and what that model looks like. Okay, next, um, dig into their, their specific marketing strategies. Um, so um, every firm has a product strategy, that how they're gonna create new products, um, when they create new products, when they launch new products. Um, they all have pricing schemes, um, distribution strategies, like certain uh, channel, channel strategies, um, how they bring the product to market, for instance. Um, and and those types of things. Also, it's good to include a um, overview of what their branding strategy is. What what how do they want to position themselves from a brand or image perspective, and, and what do they do specifically to create that image? Um, that would be the implementation or the description of that strategy. Okay, so marketing strategies. Next, uh, where available, you want to report performance um, of the firm. Um, and you probably want to focus on the product category space if you can. Um, you may have overall performance for the organization, which again is fine. Um, the more specific to the product category you can be, the better. Um, but it's market size, it's profit margins, it's revenues, any other key performance indicators that are worth reporting would be good to do. Um, sales and such. And then, and then finally, um, what would be fantastic is to create and um, help explain or talk a little bit about their product array chart. Um, and so for a little bit more on product arrays, let me, let me just offer kind of a couple, couple illustrations here. Um, we haven't quite done this in class, but on the screen, there's an image here of a product array chart, and it's you might also call it a product mix chart. But basically what happens is in each column, we have different product types that the company offers. This is an example of lean cuisine, and we have different product types that are there. We have casual cuisine, we have market creations, spa creations, and so forth. Now this is um, outlined or organized by, by brand name um, or a sub brand within, within the line uh, or within the mix that, that Lean Cuisine offers. And then going down in each row, we have each of the different specific products that fall under each of those lines. So they have seven different product lines and then they have a variety of products within each of those lines. This is a chart, this is a product array chart. And this is in incredibly valuable to be able to create for the company that you're focused on. Um, it will help you identify where your new product concept will fall when you get to that stage in stage number three. Okay, so it, it, it kind of outlines everything they're doing. Also, incidentally, if you look at this chart over time, you can identify what their product strategy is. So you, when they add products or delete products or add product lines and such, over time, you see this chart change. Um, now, I realize that you don't have the luxury of that, perhaps, um, but that's how one of the implementations of this, of this is. 
We have a couple other examples. Here's a Toyota example of a product array. Again, it's going to look a little bit different for each company. Um, each, each time you do these, they're going to look a little bit different in terms of how they're designed and how they're focused. You can probably go to the company's website and it'll probably give you a um, some type of a schematic that will give you a base a base for this this actual chart. Um, but Toyota here has the Toyota brand and then products under that brand. They have Lexus and they have Scion. Again, these are different brands underneath Toyota's overarching kind of company base. But then they have lines within each one and each of the lines you'll notice are um, distinguished by the type of vehicle cars, SUVs, hybrids, and pickups, for instance, under Toyota. And then those change a little bit under Lexus and such. And then they have products, the actual products they offer underneath each one of those. Okay, so again, the design is a little bit different. It's gonna look different for each company and yours is gonna be different from anybody else's based on the company that you, that you choose. Here's yet another one. This is a company called Tektron, um, and they have uh, a variety of different um, airworthy vehicles or, or aircraft, if you will. Um, and so they have Bell helicopter, Cessna, golf carts, so I guess not all air, right? Green Lee tools, turf equipment, and so on. And so they've got these, and these are, this is like a, conglomerate. Uh, they're very diversified, as you can tell, by the different types of companies or brands they hold. This chart shows specifically Cessna and the Cessna aircraft that are that are that are there. They they have the the Citation sub brand and the Caravan sub brand, and then they have a group of single engine aircraft. And then again, they have their their actual products underneath underneath those subheadings. Um, and that's how theirs is designed. Um, a little note of caution, some, some companies have extremely big product arrays. Um, here's a, let me see if I can pull this, this image of Gillette up. Um, Gillette has many, many different products, razors, razor blades, um, skincare, aftershaves, antiperspirants, all, all of this. What my suggestion is for a company like this is for you not to really worry about the products that are in, you know, in, in other product categories. Um, these, those can be kind of top headings, but then you want to focus on the area that you're really kind of your product category may lie in. And if I'm doing Gillette, you know, I, I might be interested in razors and such, but if my product category is skincare and aftershaves, then I'm probably only going to create a chart that focuses on that space. I may, again, include up above kind of the top row, I might have these other categories kind of in a top heading, but then in a subheading, I'll put skincare and aftershaves and then just the products that are associated with that, if that's my product category. Okay, so creating a product category chart may take a little trial and error um, to get it the way you want it to look. Um, I, I wouldn't speed through this. I would be thoughtful and deliberate in how this is done, um, but that, that's a product array array type of a chart. We have product uh, P&G, Procter & Gamble has hundred, over a hundred different brands. So again, this is one of those examples where there's no way I'm going to list all of these brands and all the products that they, they would have. I'm going to choose the subset that matches my product category um, and, and go from there. And they have beauty and grooming, health health and well-being, household, and then here within household, they have detergents, and within detergents, they have a series of different brands. Believe it or not, after this, they all have individual products under each one of these brands. So again, there's layers of, of, of product arrays. You know, there's, there's this is a hierarchical type of a chart, and you wanna to get to the space that most impacts your product category. Okay, so, so that can be, um, it can be a little bit of a daunting task, but narrowing your focus helps, helps you achieve that goal. Okay, so that, that's this product array chart concept that we really wanna focus on. 
Okay, so use this outline, use subheadings. Um, again, you have not created a product concept yet. That's stage three, so don't worry about, don't, you don't have to mention any of that. Um, you're just focusing on a deep analysis of your specific firm. Make use of subheadings. Those are always help the organization of your paper. Um, be sure to cite everything that you're using. I, I do not expect you to know all this. This is not something you're creating out of your fertile minds. This is something that you're reporting based on information that you've, you, you've culled, you've gathered. Okay, and certainly more detail is certainly better than less detail. Um, that you can never, you can never you know, provide too much depth, I don't think. Um, and specifics when you're creating a report like this. Um, you don't need to be vague. You don't need to be, um, you know, skim over, over things when the opportunity to provide detail is there. Um, okay, so this is, again, stage two of our project. Um, and um, I, I, reach out to me, as I've mentioned, if you have any questions and have fun with it. Um, but, but also this is obviously, uh, each stage is gonna be a challenge. So um, continue the good work and uh, let me know how things are going. Thanks.